Welcome to my music theory and reading music course. You can read every lesson in this series at your ease at pianotheoryexercises.com where you will also find interactive exercises to practice what you've learned. Below this video you will find links to those lessons and exercises on the website. Also below this video you will find a link where you can download this whole music theory course as a free ebook. So don't miss this opportunity. And if my lessons helped you, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks a lot! Music doesn't consist of only notes. There are moments where you don't play. Music needs rests. And that is what this lesson, lesson 16 in the music theory series, is about. A rest can be just like a note, long or short or everything in between. In a former lesson you learned about note duration. We saw the whole note, the half note, the quarter note and others. The equivalents for rests are the whole rest, the half rest and the quarter rest. Which means that the whole rest has a duration of 4 beats, the half rest 2 beats and the quarter rest just 1 beat. Just like the note durations. You can write down the rests on the staff as follows. This is a whole rest. It's just hanging on the fourth line of the staff. This is a half rest. It's lying on the third line. And this is the symbol for a quarter rest. And just as with note duration, you can also have shorter rests. An eighth rest, for example, is written as follows. It has, just like an eighth note, a duration of a half beat. By adding flags we can make even shorter rests. This is a sixteenth rest with a duration of a quarter beat, a thirty-second rest with a duration of an eighth beat, etc. So let's just see how this all works in some examples. And the first example is really very simple as you can see. It has only whole notes, whole rests, half notes and half rests. The metronome will start with four counts before it begins. Just listen well and try to follow the example. It's not very difficult. So that was not too difficult. Just look at the next example, where I also introduce quarter notes and quarter rests. And I think that this example was not too difficult either. It becomes a little bit more difficult when we introduce eighth notes and eighth rests. Just look at the next example. Now why is this more difficult? Well, that is because the beginning of a note or a rest is not always exactly together with a beat. It can be in between two beats. So listen to this example and see if you can follow it. Try to concentrate well and to count together with the metronome. Ok, now perhaps you could follow it without any problem. But perhaps you couldn't. So let me explain a little bit better. Now in order to better understand how this works we have to count. And we will count to 4. Why to 4? Well, that is because most music is written in 4-4 four, four time. Now, you probably don't know yet what 4-4 four, four time is, but we will do that in a later lesson. For now, we will count to 4. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Each count goes together with the beat, so with the metronome. Now, as I explained already, some notes and some rests are in between two beats. So we actually need something between the 1, 2, 3 and 4. And that's why we will count 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. So between the beats we say the word and. You could also count while tapping your hand on your knee. Each time you say a number, so 1, 2, 3 or 4, you hit your knee. And each time you say the word and, your hand is up. That's why we also very often speak of downbeats and upbeats. A downbeat is on the beat, so that means when you say one, two, three or four. And an upbeat is when you say the word and, when your hand is up. Now let me write all this down under the staff. The first note, which is a quarter note, is exactly on beat one. 
Since it's a quarter note, the duration is exactly that of one beat. Which means that the next note, which is also a quarter note, falls on beat 2. This second note also has a duration of one beat, so that eighth rest falls exactly on beat 3. The eighth rest has a duration of half a beat. The next note also has a duration of a half beat, so together they're one beat. Which means that this quarter note falls exactly on beat 4. Since this is a quarter note, the duration is that of one beat. Which means that the next beat falls exactly on the first of the three eighth notes. Since we would count only till four, this first eighth note is again beat one. We need two eighth notes for a whole beat, which means that beat two is on this last eighth note of the three eighth notes. Now this eighth note that falls on beat two, together with the eighth rest, are again one beat, which means that beat three is on this quarter note, and finally beat four on the last quarter note. So here we have all the beats. Let's now put the ends, so the up beats, in between the numbers. Here they are. I will play the example once again, very slowly, and I will count with it. Listen very carefully and concentrate and try to follow. Here it comes. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and I hope you clearly understood this example. If not, just go back and listen once more. I will once again play the example a little bit faster and I will not count together. You will still hear the metronome. Here it comes. Okay, so that's the way how to do it. You just analyze where the beats are, where the ends are, so where the down beats and the up beats are, and then you understand how to play the rhythm. Now, till now I've only played the note C, because we concentrated only on the rhythm and not on the pitch. Let me now in the next example also play a melody instead of only playing rhythm. So here it is, and you do exactly the same thing. You put the one, two, threes and fours, and you put the ends. And let me now just play the music. I will do it slowly. I will not count with it, because you have all that under the staff. There will be a metronome. As I said, I will play it slowly. Just follow it, concentrate well. There we go. Of course, to understand this well, you have to practice a lot to be able to quickly read sheet music. Now, for this purpose, as always, we have interactive exercises on pianotheoryexercises.com. You will find a link below this video.